Will a induction cooktop run on an iTech World 120X battery? notice of late I've been talking a bit about lithium batteries in particular my iTech World 120X battery which is available in Australia from a company obviously called iTech World which are based in Perth in Western Australia as you know the 120X is classed as a 120 amp hour battery but it's got a capacity of 105 amps the specs on it it's got a continuous discharge of 150 amps. So that's continuous, okay? It's got a five minute discharge, 175 amps. It will peak, I believe, at 275 amps, or thereabouts, for about two or three seconds before the BMS will cut out. Despite all this 240 volt gear and the energy I've been putting on this battery, I've been able to monitor it to make sure I never get close to overloading the BMS. I'm just going to cook up a quick hamburger. Let me explain you the induction cooktop I've got here now. I've got what's called a Smart Touch Slimline. So it's an Australian design, purpose built for RV, barbecue and recreation use. What that means exactly, guys, I've got no idea. I haven't tested any other induction cooktops. Guys, this is the only induction cooktop I ever cooked with. So I'm just dicing up some onions here. I've got a chicken snitchel that I just picked up at Coles the other day. I'm just going to slice up some tomatoes. Let's talk about the induction cooktop because I think that's got a fair bit to do with it as well. So right now at a thousand watt we're drawing 104 amps out of this battery. So it's a 12 volt setup as you're aware. Now the Smart Touch Slimline which as it says is designed for Australian conditions. Let me just turn that back down to 500 watts now. So what that means, like I said before, I've got no idea. So how that compares with one of these cheaper Kmart ones you see, $50, $60. Uh, maybe one day I might actually grab one of those and compare them side by side to see which is more suitable. I know those $50, $60 ones from Kmart I've, I've noticed of late seem to be fairly popular in particular in their caravans etc which have a very similar setup to what I've got here with the Victron gear etc but even if you don't have the Victron you've got your Red Arc you've got your Enerdrive and so on so they're all pretty similar always all do the same thing basically this Smart Touch Slimline does it really have any advantages over your 50 60 dollar Kmart ones. I generally use this at 500 watts. So right now we're drawing 93 which is 984 watts. But then you're wondering but hang on this has got a 500 watt setting. Yeah you're probably thinking why is it not running at 500 watt? Why is it drawing? When it comes on right now it'll come up on the screen here 982 watts so what I've found is when I set this at 500 watts what it does you can probably hear I don't know if you can hear it cycling on and off so it comes on and off and I think how they get away with that 500 watt rating is that over a time period say over a 10 minute period but initially when it's on it's going to draw that almost thousand watts so I bought this guys thinking I'd be able to run it on my little kick-ass 700 watt inverter at the time. Well obviously when I looked into the specs when I tested this for the first time, uh-uh, not that. So you're still going to need something at least your 1600 watt inverter to run something like this. 
2000 plus ideal. So the battery's handling it fine, no problems. The battery terminals are still only sitting on 32 degrees Celsius. So it's got no problems hitting this, keeping up with this. Turn this over. So I might just turn the heat up a bit. Go to 1000. So now I'm at 1000 watts. Again, the battery handling it, no problems, 105. So we know this iTech world will handle 1000 watts. Let's try 1500 watts. Let's go to 1500 watts. Let's have a look. Let's join 130. So I know that will handle that, no problems at all. So we've got 1500 watts here, guys, and it's drawing 130. Now, remember, that's also got to take consideration. I've got a fridge running here as well, but that's probably only drawing about two amps when it's on. So I'm just going to turn that back down. Got a fair bit of breeze blowing through here from my left, going right through here. And that's the beauty with this setup when you're cooking with the induction, is you don't need a windshield. So I've got a bread roll here handy, ready to go. We'll just sit that up here. Drawing 122 amps at the moment, guys. What are we on? 1000 watts. All right, that's interesting. The fact that we're drawing 120 amps and yet it was 1000 watts and yet when I had it on 1000 watts before it was drawing, what, 984,000, something like that. So it's interesting how it's gone. So now the battery's gone down to 90%. So we've used 10% of the battery. So you're probably thinking, hang on, let me draw that down to 500 because that's getting a bit high. You're probably thinking, but hang on. 10% of your battery, that's a fair bit. But remember guys, I've only got one single 105 amp battery here. And if you watched my last video, you would have realized in there that I am going to build my own lithium battery setup. We're down to 89% now. So probably by the time this is fully cooked, we would have used about 15% out of the battery. Now, I plan to build a 304 amp battery. It's a 304 amp battery. So three times the capacity what we got here. So instead of say, this will be say like it'd be 15%. So it'll third that, it'll use 5%. I could cook my meal and it'll only use 5% of the capacity out of that battery. I could go away camping, two, three days camping, and honestly, I don't think I will need to worry about bringing a solar panel. Currently, the battery weighs about 10 kilos. This new system I'm gonna build, you're looking about 22, 25 kilos. But remember, it is a 300 amp capacity battery. A lot of trips that I'll do, I will not need to worry about bringing a solar panel. We're on 87%, so my guess is about 15% of the battery use is about spot on. I could cook a meal like this, 75 amps of thereabouts of capacity left in that battery to get me through the night. If I use an induction cooktop, safer as well than carrying a gas bottle, the costs involved in filling gas bottles nowadays, and if you're in a remote area, it's gonna be a little bit hard to fill up your gas bottle. Let's turn that off. One of the purpose of this, vi this video, guys, not only is to show a bit of a demonstration of the induction cooktop, the process, how much quicker it is, is to show that the kick-ass battery has absolutely no problems in running your induction cooktops. Even if you only got the one, guys, even if you only got the one. Now, if I was traveling on the road and I just pulled over, you saw how quick that is. I mean, I spent most of the time chatting here, so I could have done this a lot quicker. 
pull out the drawer here, grab me induction cooktop, and instead of stop and buy at McDonald's or somewhere like that, save some money, make a nice healthy, well I probably wouldn't call this exactly very healthy, but probably more healthy than your McDonald's burgers. And there you go. As quick as that, a nice burger. Now if I had my air rose to pro and I'm out camping at night, I could fry up some chips in about 20 minutes. <laughs> so I got burger and chips. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you how well the iTech World 120X actually does work as long as you keep your loads below your 150 amps and as long as you're using an inverter that is compatible and as long as your big trick guys is to use nice big juicy cabling to your inverter and keep the runs short and make sure you've got a really good connection on those battery terminals so use a proper, if you're making them yourself, use a proper crimper because that's very, very important is you've got that good connection. Otherwise, it's going to cause resistance and resistance equals heat. Heat potentially, well, it will equals fire for, for safety's sake. So if you're not sure about that, just go uptown and buy them already made. Go to the battery barn, battery world, any of those places, your auto electrician, go to a decent auto electrician guys. There are some dodgy ones around as I found out and I'm sure many of you would have found out as well. So I think that answers it. A single iTech World 120X certainly can handle a induction, at least the one I've got here, which is called the Smart Touch Slimline. I've had that one for a while now. It's not the cheapest one out. Well, whether there's any difference between that and the cheaper ones, I don't know. I'd like to get a hold of one of these cheaper ones one day and give it a go and compare them. So let's just check and see what we've consumed on my battery. 86%. So my battery's at 86% state of charge. Now, if I was traveling on the road, going somewhere, or even if I'm camping, I would have my solar panels out now and within probably the next hour or so, particularly if I use both my solar panels, well within the next hour, those batteries would be fully charged. Next big ticket purchase item. Well, I've got a couple actually, guys, but the biggest one of all is to get the cells and the BMS and all the cabling that I will need to build this custom built system. Now, obviously all these components are gonna come from China and I believe it's about, can be anywhere up to three months shipping to get them in. And the way things are worldwide at the moment, you can understand why there's three months through shipping. But that's from when I order it. So I haven't ordered anything yet, guys. I'm still doing some research. I'm still watching videos. So all you guys who commented on my last video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I have come across Will Powell's before and I have come across Andy from Off Grid Garage and I've gone back and watched some of his other videos particularly on the Dali BMS so it seems to be a really popular one out there guys but it's got a couple of issues on it and I'll talk about those in future videos as we get closer to making a final decision exactly what we're going for so I think I made a decision which cells I'm going to go for. They're going to be the EVE EVE 304. They're new cells. They've only just been released. And from what I've seen, particularly on Andy's Off Grid Garage channel and many others, they seem to be the bee's knees. They seem to be really good. And that's a 12 volt system with 304 amps and I can use all of those 304 amps. How awesome is that going to be? It's going to make a big difference with my setup because then what that will mean is I will not need to carry a generator with me again. Sometimes I probably will if I'm going to a remote area, particularly if I'm base camping 
for four, five, six days. It'll be handy to have that little generator with me. And it, honestly, guys, it's so portable, I can just sit it behind my driver's seat and it won't even be in the way there. So there are times I'm still going to take that. And there's a reason I got it and there's a reason I bought it and there's no point not using it. <laughs> in fact, I haven't had it given it a run for about three weeks now. So I'm going to grab it out of my room and I'm going to set it right here and I'm going to charge the battery up on this just to give it a run to get some fresh fuel through it. I tend to do that every couple of weeks to keep it in prime A1 condition. So guys, and not only that, particularly if I'm out remote and say, for example, I have an issue with the Almighty Plus inverter, well then I've got the generator I can go back to. Same with this one here, guys. I'm going to bring up a little backup. Look, I've got little, it's already in there. I've got little backpacking stoves, a little gas that uses little gas canisters. I've got a jet boil as well. So that's another backup just there. So you can't rely 100% on this electronic gear if you're going out in remote areas. And I don't. I like a backup for, and sometimes a backup for a backup as well. <laughs> just to make sure so it doesn't spoil your camping trip. So guys, shorter video today. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. If you watch right through to the end, thank you very much. And look after yourself. Be kind, everyone. And cheers till next time.